Small black hole is stuck in our entire universe. Okay, interesting, that dog is broken. Do we even know who is this 4chan? Watch, 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 watch. Because they watch Watch what you watch Don't you just love watching award ceremonies? So I watched a lot of porn to remember what fucking actually looked like. You know, they're all like a competition for who's the best at virtue signaling. Like, who is the most women in, in lead roles? Who is the most black men or... Fuck it, it's the current year. Who gives the most screen time to transsexual gay black Apache helicopters? It's time to live my dream. I, for one, don't miss when they used to be more about good acting, writing, or storytelling, and the more progressive news outlets among us feel the same. It was an amazing night for female-driven stories like Handmaids and um, Big Little Lies. Acceptance speeches emphasize the power of women in front of the camera and also behind it. But what sets the Emmys apart from the rest is the fact that they're not afraid to be political. And by political, I mean Calling the president a racist, racist sexist, sexist, homophobic, homophobic xenophobic. xenophobic. We refuse to be controlled by a sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical bigot. Really? And in, and in 2017, we still refuse to be controlled by a sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical bigot. I want to thank Trump for making black people number one on the most oppressed list. He's, he's the reason I'm probably up here. Unlike the presidency, enemies go to the winner of the popular vote. Yeah, you see, you know, it's, uh, it's so funny. The, the dumbass thinks that the Emmys are decided by popular vote. Uh, that's, uh, that's priceless. Real though, the enemies this year hit a record low in the ratings, which... I don't know, it might lead some people to suggest that I might have something to do with uh, all the Trump and Republican bashing. And I'm not saying that Trump voters would even watch this stupid fucking piece of shit, but you'd expect that even its more liberal audience is just getting a little bored of it all at this stage, if not irritated. You know, just, uh, just a little. Any chance we hook up again tonight? <laughs> like, it's becoming hard to distinguish one award ceremony from the other. Like, like, who is this week's Meryl Streep for bravely telling us that she doesn't like the president? You know, what, what, what her buddies and shills in the media pat her on the back and tell her how brave you are? I don't know, the New York Times is surprised at how many winners just de declined the opportunity to make any sort of reference to uh, bashing the president, I guess. Oh, look, it's that, uh, it's that actor everyone used to hate for being a homophobe until, uh, until he started dressing up like Trump. I suppose I should say, at long last, Mr. President, here is your Emmy. Well, well maybe it wasn't all that bad this year. Like, uh, at least they had Sean Spicer making an appearance, and just for the butthurt alone, this, uh, this is worth it. Be the largest audience to witness an Emmy's period. Yeah, but, uh, but of course, CNN uh, weren't, weren't happy with it. Uh, uh, they, they were afraid that the... Um, the presence of Sean Spicer might uh, normalize President Trump, and, you know, of, of course, they, they wouldn't want that. I'm making jokes about one of his most infamous moments where he was misleading the public, that was back after the inauguration, we talked about the crowd size. Look, Brian, I mean, in this age of shamelessness, is it just a matter of time before he gets a TV gig? A lot of people are saying that Colbert should not be normalizing Sean Spicer. Th these people, they're, they're not stupid for thinking it's unusual for a White House press secretary to lie. They're, they're stupid for thinking that anyone but their choir believes them when they feign ignorance like this. Like, this is so fucking disingenuous. You really think that... Barack Obama's White House secretary didn't lie. What was his name? James, James Car Carney or something like that? Whatever. You really think that W's uh, pr White House press secretary didn't lie? You know? And, and, and the way that uh, Sean Spicer early in the week said that he would have just barefaced lied, hands down for Trump, I'm sh I'm, and I'm sure he did. You know, he, he definitely did. I don't see this as anything more than an affirmation of unshakable loyalty. Your job as press secretary is to represent the president's voice. Whether or not you agree or not isn't your job. Then you have to march out there and go, yeah, he had a bigger crowd, everybody. You, look, as I said, he's, he's the president. 
Yeah. Um, he decides. I and, understand. And that's, that's what you sign up to do. It sucks that Sean, like the rest of them, puts his present before objective truth or honesty, but it's not the job of the White House press secretary to uh, be the objective truth speaker. It's his job to defend the president. Yeah, whatever. Let, let, let's move on. Well, anyway, um, despite it being the lowest rated Emmys in history, CBS News called it the best ever. Kevin, good morning. I think it was one of the best shows ever. It was a great show, wasn't it, Nora? So now we have MSNBC falsely claiming that Miss Texas called Trump a white supremacist. Appearing as a panel member both on Friday's Last Word and again on Saturday's AM Joy, frequent MSNBC contributor Karine Jean-Pierre of MoveOn.org was so desperate to interpret racism into President Donald Trump's criticism of ESPN's Jamel Hill for calling him a white supremacist that she misleadingly claimed that Miss Texas said the same thing. Just a couple of days ago, you had a white Miss Texas say the same thing that a black ESPN host said. You didn't hear anything from the White House about that. It was silence Selena. about that. Jamil Hill and Miss Texas. We we haven't talked about how Miss Texas yeah, actually amazing. You know, yeah, right. called Donald Trump a white supremacist. And clearly, the, it was a different reaction uh, for on on both sides, and I, we we know why. But those that's that's uh, yeah. No, you didn't have anybody on the White House podium calling for her to be fired. From, exactly. Like, Texas, yeah. In fact, Miss Texas never called Trump a white supremacist, but instead complained that you know, complained over his response to the white supremacist violence in Charlottesville. I think that the white supremacist issue, it was very obvious that it was a terrorist attack. And I think that President Donald Trump should have made a statement earlier addressing the fact and making sure all Americans feel safe in this country. That is the number one issue right now. Thank you very much. Congratulations. So, uh, this bimbo. Who is this 4chan? Who is I, uh, guess her name is Brooke Baldwin. Invited onto her show a couple of sports pundits to uh, debate the politics of free speech. Specifically, they discussed the potential firing of Jamel Hill after her calling the president a white supremacist on Twitter, remember? Like, uh, like we haven't seen or heard that one before. Well, anyway, Fox Sports Radio's Clay Travis argued that as a point of fairness, Jamel Hill should be fired. Because that's what ESPN did last year with Kurt Schilling after he voiced his opposition to a gender-confused man using the same bathroom as your daughter. But he also mentioned that as a free speech fundamentalist, he doesn't believe that any network should be able to fire anyone for their political beliefs. And th then uh, Clay Travis just sought to demonstrate just how much he values the First Amendment with a little bit of uh, mildly inappropriate humor. I'm a First Amendment absolutist. I believe in only two things completely the First Amendment and boobs. And so once they made the decision that they were Wait, not going to say allow a you conservative non-sports related commentary, they hi, couldn't hold on, do it hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly as a woman anchoring the show. Did you say, what did you say? You yeah. believe in the First Amendment and BWBS? Boobs, two things that have only never let me down in this entire country's history, the First Amendment and boobs. So those are the only two things I believe in absolutely in the country. And the reaction from a Megyn Kelly lied on this. is It's just priceless. You, you know, it's, it's not as if he said nigger. You know, he's not like this guy. Nigger, honky, cracker. Not like this guy. Nigger, please. She and her buddy from ESPN literally have a complete meltdown because this guy says he likes boobs. One of the things that Jamel's had to deal with her entire career and many women who I'm friends with in this business and have been friends with in this business for a long time is sexism, blatant sexism, comments about her appearance. For, so for somebody to come on CNN and to say something like the only thing I believe in in a discussion I'm about just, something. I'm still there too, and I just want to make sure it, I'm hearing I, you correctly. B-O-O-Z-E or B-O-O-B-S. Because yeah. as a woman, I'm, I'm, I'm... As in boobs. I believe completely in the First Amendment and in boobs. Those are the only two things I believe 100% in in this country. And by the way, Jamel has Why absolutely you nothing here, to do with live her background on CNN, at all. Speak, he immediately, I, did you notice that? He went straight to that. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I did go, guys, I did go straight to that. Why would you because even it, say that live on national television and with a female host? Why I say it live on the radio all the time because it's true and that's what I do. Because okay. I like boobs and the First Amendment, which is exactly what I said. You could please. You see, by directly following his statement of trust in the democratic value of free speech with an outrageous comment. He points out just how far political correctness has gone by demonstrating the CNN would overreact like this to his non-sequitur statement of the obvious. 
as uh, well as hammering home the point that free speech is there to protect unpopular speech. Which, sadly, in this day and age includes saying uh, that men like boobs. Speaking of boobs, I fucking hate the view. Leave a, leave a comment below if you uh, also hate the view. Well, anyway, we see Guinan here from Star Trek using her uh, psychotic, psy psychic powers uh, to remember whether anti-Trump protesters and Antifa caused violence before Trump was in office. There's nothing there. We can't find anything. So this, to me, Antifa is one of those things that, I don't want to say the right, but somebody came up with as a, as a catchphrase so that you could say, you know, oh, there is violence on the other side. But I don't remember violent... Uh, demonstrations before the gentleman who's in now got in. Well, that's true. That's so the thing you gotta remember here is Guinan is really wise, so um, despite there being confidential Department of Homeland Security documents labeling, labeling Antifa as a domestic terrorist group, Guinan tells us Antifa really is an invention of the right. You know, and, and you should believe her too. She, she's a psycho. A psychic. This creature is not what she appears to be. She's an imp. And where she goes, trouble always follows. The other thing is, I, my fear is that this term Antifa, they're trying to use it to scare people so that they don't stand up against hate. When is it wrong to stand up against hate? It is never, ever wrong. The late, great Easy e once said, they put my picture out with silence, cause my identity by itself causes violence. Modern scholars have interpreted that this means words are violent, influencing academics such as this guy to determine whether specifically those of President Donald Trump are in fact violent. Mike Isaacson is a professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. He founded the Antifa group Smash Racism DC and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for driving me. So, your position, tell me if I'm mischaracterizing this, is people you define as fascists do not have free speech rights. No. And if words equate to violence, then surely we have every right to use physical violence in return. I don't think he has a right to speak in public unopposed, and that is ultimately what the purpose of Antifa is, is to show well, up and, and oppose him. So you're saying, is that justified? Yes. I believe that communities have the right to defend themselves against threats to, them, to their community. Against ideas they don't like. No, they against, have a right against, to commit against violence. people who have explicitly said that they want to eliminate those people from our society. But I believe... you're conflating, you're conflating violence with ideas. No, If I I'm have not, not raised my I, hand I think... to strike you, you have no right to right, strike but you me. Have to, but in order to raise your hand to strike me, you have to think that you're going to strike me. Okay, but it's, you absolutely have a right to say it's not okay. What you don't have a right is to prevent me from saying what I think, even if you disagree, and you definitely don't have a right to commit violence against me. And you're blurring the lines there. And by the way, don't you work at a criminal yes, <laughs> I mean, college? In a yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, maybe, the, maybe there's a little bit of credence to, to the professor's claim here. Like, uh, Trump's words, maybe they are violent. They do actually seem to be causing physical harm to some people, like, uh, Dana, Dana Milbank of the Washington Post says uh, Trump is killing him. No, really. He's killing him. Uh, yeah, let's read this here. I went for my annual physical last month, and for the first time in 49 years, I had to report that I have not been feeling well. You, 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 uh, you haven't been feel you've been feeling perfect for 49 years, have you? Never sick once. Never sick once? I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe he's just lucky. Maybe he's just lucky. And he's been experiencing fatigue, headaches, poor sleep, and uh, even some occasional chest pain. Jesus Christ, he hasn't, he hasn't experienced a headache in 49 years, or poor sleep. Uh, fatigue. They, like, they, these are symptoms of a fucking hangover. If you want to be a Hulkamaniac, I can sure tell you how to stay on track. You gotta train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins too. These are all the things that the maniacs do. So now we come to the literally Hitler literary world. And uh, here we have PolitiFact. Uh, fact-checking Hillary Clinton's book and failing to find a single thing false in it. I wasn't going to do a video on PolitiFact soon, I'm not going to spend too long on this, but uh, here's something that I've already found to be false, and that is when uh, Hillary Clinton claims that Trump was stalking her around the stage during the second presidential debate. Well, what would you do? 
Do you stay calm, keep smiling, and carry on as if he weren't repeatedly invading your space? Or do you turn, look him in the eye, and say loudly and clearly, Back up, you creep. Get away from me. I know you love to intimidate women, but you can't intimidate me, so back up. Where, in fact, Trump stayed largely in his own spot, as we can see from uh, this meme, after being warned from a former debate competitor with Hillary that through deceptive camera editing, camera shots, Clinton and the media could give the illusion that he was, in fact, stalking Clinton around stage. And, uh, and, and then we got some grade-A virtue signaling from offended celebrities on Twitter who, who don't have a sense of humor. I'll tell you this, we have to be careful because of the Twitter handle of the individual who sent it in the first place. The President of the United States... The President of the United States retweeting a video on Twitter that shows him hitting a golf ball and then the golf ball striking Hillary Clinton and knocking her down. You see it there. Uh, the President of the United States retweeted that this morning. Why? And uh, I picked this one out in particular because it's, it's, it's so fucking hypocritical. Um, we have author Stephen King voicing his disgust at the madman for retweeting this, this funny gif. Trump thinks hitting a woman with a golf ball and knocking her down is funny. Myself, I think it indicates a severely fucked up mind. Now, uh, this, this is the guy who included a child orgy in his book, It. Uh, where, where all the main characters, all 11-year-olds, have sex with their female friend in turns, who uh, also happens to be 11. Um, this apparently was done in the book, so the clown wouldn't catch them, or, or something. Um, true story, true story. And no, this scene doesn't show up in the movie, uh, not, not in the remake that just came out either, which is, um, which is a shame, which is, uh, which is a shame. Bloody waste of two hours. Thanks for watching, and if you feel like you've been thoroughly disinformed by this video, please remember to hit that like button, and if you're new here, please hit subscribe. Also, I'd like to thank these patrons for supporting my channel and and my drug addiction. These guys make it possible so I can smoke a couple of beers on the weekend. Yeah.